ocean border shared by Thailand and Cambodia, the Thai Navy is hunting a deadly enemy. This is the anti-piracy patrol, armed as if for war, with the task of stopping and searching suspicious vessels. Without the Navy as sheriff and enforcer here, this is a wild and lawless sea. As night falls, a fishing boat is ordered to prepare for boarding. The Navy is prepared for anything. Off the coast of Cambodia, even small vessels like this have been known to be heavily armed. But this time, they don't find pirates. They find one of their victims. <laughs> Pun Suksawat lost everything to pirates. Unarmed on the open seas, fishermen like him are easy prey for modern day brigands. Over the last 10 years, the Thai Navy has proven that it's prepared to shoot back. Shots across the bow were not enough to stop this hijacked fishing boat. In this rare footage taken by a Thai sailor, the Navy relentlessly pursued the pirates into the night. Zero tolerance till the end. Two of the pirates were shot dead. Miraculously, the rest of the pirate crew survived. Many victims of pirates have not been so lucky. There has never been anything romantic about pirates, and there is nothing romantic about pirates today. They are ruthless criminals who have killed uh, innocent sailors uh, on board these ships. Working from these headquarters in London, the International Maritime Bureau is fighting an explosion of violent crime at sea. One has to be careful there, as in uh, generally around Indonesia is where the problems arise. There Not since the 18th century uh, has piracy into, uh, been as uh, rampant as it is today. In just 10 years, there's been almost a five-fold increase, with 469 ships attacked last year. Most of these have been in Southeast Asia, where economic crisis and political instability have fueled a culture of criminal impunity. Indonesia is one of the countries which feature heavily and uh, for the same reasons, the, the problems of uh, law and order in Indonesia which cause these uh, attacks to take place. Across Southeast Asia, piracy has been the scourge of the region's maritime trade. Increasingly, huge cargo ships are targeted, even oil tankers. Their multi-million dollar cargoes seized by highly organized international syndicates. This is how they do it. In a small, fast boat, they pull up alongside these huge cargo vessels. They take a grappling hook and a rope, they throw it over the side, and the pirates carrying guns board the boat, easily overpowering the small crews that man these large vessels. Within moments, the ship belongs to the pirates. That's just what happened to the oil tanker Siam Zangsai. On a dark night 18 months ago, 12 Indonesian pirates crept up and boarded the tanker from the back. Undetected, they made their way to the bridge, easily capturing the unsuspecting crew. At time, the piracy, the first they come to uh, Aston on, over, over here, and, uh, by the law. That's where they climbed over? Yeah, yeah. And they had and, guns and knives? Yeah, they, everybody, they have a gun, the knife. On night, and I saw the leader there, they got the gun. Two days later, Captain Cha Chai and ten of his men were put in a small boat. Fears of piracy meant their pleas for help were ignored by two passing ships. 
Remarkably, the captain and his crew made it to Sarawak, except one engineer kept as a hostage to assist unloading the oil cargo in China. By chance, Chinese authorities noticed the ship's name had been changed and arrested the pirates. They may yet be punished, but more often than not, pirates can easily discharge their cargo and buy their way out of trouble. Unless there are particular reasons for the port authorities to be interested in this vessel, uh, there is no reason why uh, the vessel should be de detected as having a false identity. But when another cargo ship, the Inabukwa, sailed into the Philippines port of Salamage, suspicions about its identity were raised. Just one week before docking here, the Inabukwa had been overrun by pirates. It was about 8 o'clock in the evening on the 15th of March this year that this 1,200-ton vessel was hijacked at sea by armed pirates near Indonesia. Its 22 crew members were left abandoned on a deserted island. But then, just 48 hours later, the ship had a new captain and a new name. A crude paint job had transformed the Inabukwa into the pirated Chung Sin. Yeah. But the freighter's true identity remained brazenly visible. A panicked attempt to leave port was foiled by the Philippines Coast Guard, which impounded the vessel and detained its camera-shy crew under suspicion of piracy. When we interviewed them, they told us that uh, they were hired to just to bring the ship here in the Philippines. So that, according to them, they're not pirates? Yes. Do you believe them? No, we don't believe on them. In the ship's hold is the booty, the lure for today's pirates. Woo, it's warm down here. Down here, a pillaged fortune. Four million dollars worth of white pepper and gleaming tin. Those are the ingots. Uh, I don't know how much it costs. And those uh, at the uh, white pepper, uh, those bugs. A lot of stuff. Yes. which the Inabukwa was taken has fired the fears of merchant seamen right across this region. And for good reason. Whether lost to pirates or maritime fraud, plundered cargoes now cost world commerce $32 billion a year. At Port Klang, south of Kuala Lumpur, the 4,500 ton cargo ship Celestina is preparing for a night in the Malacca Strait the narrow passage linking two halves of the globe. For centuries, pirates have preyed on ships braving this ancient trade route. Today, it's the most perilous waterway in the world. In 1999, there were just two attacks in the Malacca Strait. Last year, there were 75. The Celestina's Filipino captain admits he's anxious, even scared. During the daytime, I had to uh, take enough uh, rest and sleep so that in the evening uh, I'll be awake all the time. Yeah. So that you're ready? Yes, that's right. Before embarking, the crew runs through its compulsory drill for dealing with a pirate attack. Modern day pirates may be armed to the teeth, but modern day merchant ships are armed only with fire hoses. It's very easy for them to, to come on board and take over. And uh, we don't even have any, any, anything to defend ourselves, except the, uh, the, you know, the hoses to prevent them from uh, coming. But if they have guns, then there's no way to stop them. Unless you have an equivalent force, at least, on board, able to deter them by the use of arms, there is no point carrying arms on board. 
as one shipping observer has mentioned, to put um, an AK-47 in the arms of a merchant seaman who is not trained to use it is a very dangerous option. With seafarers unarmed, maritime authorities are the only line of defence. Malaysia's marine police are relatively well equipped compared to their Indonesian counterparts on the other side of the Malacca Strait. They are eager to display one of their 20 patrol boats and its air wing support. But the marine police only captured two groups of pirates last year. On this day, they make a catch of a different kind. Suspicions are raised during a routine check on a boat attempting to cross from Indonesia. The nervous crew half-heartedly uncovers a harmless cargo of dried noodles. The marine police persist and nailed beneath the boards, not noodles, but tightly packed people, set free into custody. How many are there? Five. Where have they come from? They come from Indonesia. Just as Indonesia cannot stem the flow of human cargo, whether illegal immigrants to Malaysia or asylum seekers into Australia, nor can it control the pirates haunting its shores. One quarter of all attacks worldwide now occur in Indonesian waters. But even if pirates are caught, there's no certainty they could be prosecuted. Almost half the world's freight passes through Asian waters, but not a single Southeast Asian nation has signed the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Convention, which allows prosecution for crimes committed in other countries' waters. In Asia, only India, China and Japan and Australia have ratified the convention. And we think that there is a great need for governments to look at their laws, to ratify this convention, if not to bring into their own laws measures which can deal with the internationality of this crime. Otherwise, all the efforts of looking for a ship, uh, seizing it, bringing it into port will be futile if the law enforcement agencies cannot prosecute. For now at least, tracking another international crime, terrorism, is consuming the world's focus. While it was terror from the skies which triggered talk of a new war, the ancient and escalating crime of piracy continues to unleash its terrors on the seas.